My name is Kathy Fry, and uh, I do travel with Agape. Um, but that's not what I'm going to share with you about this morning. Actually, this morning, I'm going to share with you about my children. Um, I got married at 19, and uh, about eight years later, we started having a family. And we have three children, ages 17, 15, and 12. And they are dear. We are hoping that they actually make it to the 11 service, but some of them may still be in bed. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. But happy Mother's Day to me because I'm here with all of you. So even if they don't show up, we will all have a great Mother's Day together. Um, my dad was a Southern Baptist pastor right here in Loomis, California growing up. And... I grew up loving the Lord with all of my heart, so I thought. And I grew up with the Bible very close and very dear to me. But as I grew up, I grew to love this, this. But I didn't really know how to love who this was trying to point me towards. And I had taught many, many Bible studies over the years. But in 2013, I was dry. My family was dry. My husband was dry. And I began to pray a prayer, a very bold prayer. And I honestly had no idea how bold until the Lord began to answer that prayer. And the prayer that I began to pray was, Lord, show me who you are. Because I, had, I saw that... There was a really special man in the Bible who actually prayed that prayer, and that was Moses. And he believed that as he prayed that prayer that God would answer it and that he would begin to see things about God that he hadn't seen before. And so I began to pray that prayer, God, show me, show me who you are. If there are places in my life that I have boxed you in because it's better and it's easier, show me who you are. One month later, our dear, dear friend, Joanne Moody, got healed. And it rocked us because we had no idea that God even moved like that today. I hadn't been taught that. Um, I could teach why God didn't move in that way today. But he did because he didn't actually listen to the box that I had put him in. About three to six months later, Joanne was here, and she was sharing her testimony. And ironically, I was part of her prayer team, praying for people to receive healing. But that morning, the Lord had woken me up at 4 a.m. because we had a child. Our, he was 8 at the time, and he's 12 now. But we had a child who also needed healing. He had suffered from a hip condition. And so I brought him... And what happened was at the end of the service, Joanne saw him because he was sitting in the front row somewhere over by you. It's, it's a very good place to be sitting right over there, just saying. So Jake looked at me and he said, do I have to go up there and get prayer by myself or are you going to go up there with me? And I said, no, I'll go up there with you. I mean, I'm a good mom. Of course I'm going to go up there with you. So Jake came walking up and Joanne met him at the bottom of the stairs because he was having trouble walking and she prayed for him. And what happened next blew my mind, but it was an answer to the prayer that I had prayed in the summer of 2013. God, show me, begin to reveal to me who you are. And so what happened was as Joanne prayed for him, Jake fell backwards. And what I saw on his face, which I thought was fear, I asked him, are you doing okay? And he said, yeah, I just want to know what is that feeling going through my body right now? And I looked at Joanne and said, what is that feeling going through his body right now? Because I was irritated. I had no idea what was happening to my son. But what was happening was God was healing him because I had brought him, because I had listened to that just whisper that God was prompting for me to bring my son to the place where he could encounter God. As moms, that is the special place that we have. We have that place to be able to bring our families, bring our children to the place where they can encounter God. What happened was Jake walked away from this place healed that day, but he continued to walk 
He actually continued to shake for about four days after, which I did have to ask Joanne, what is the shaking about? She said, well, it's the power of God. And that was really all the answer that she gave me. But about two weeks later, Jake asked me to read him Ezekiel um, as a bedtime story. I know that seems kind of strange, a little <laughs> odd, but I did. And as we read through Ezekiel at the end of either chapter two or three, Ezekiel is talking about um, his encounters with the Lord. And what happened was he shook. That's what Jake's Bible said. His, his reader's version said that Ezekiel shook for seven days after encountering the power of God. And Jake said, that's what happened to me. God encountered me. As a mom... Before the Lord begins to encounter our kids, we would do anything for our kids. I would do anything for my children. I was the one who was dry. I needed the Lord to encounter me because I couldn't let God encounter my kids. I didn't have any idea what that even looked like or how to even find it. What happened was the Lord also encountered me in a powerful way and things in our family began to change. I felt like I began to have a perspective of heaven. I was no longer fearful of the things that came against my family. I was no longer fearful of depression. I was no longer fearful of my kids not sleeping at night. I was no longer fearful of their friends um, and what their friends said. I knew that I could speak life back in as I was telling the enemy that he needed to be quiet. What happened last summer was Jake was um, in a relationship He's now 12. He was in a relationship with a very sweet little girl, but she had a lot of problems. And what happened was Jake slowly started to take those problems on. Depression, isolation, suicide, suicidal thoughts. And as a family, we saw him traveling down this road of separating himself from our family. At the end of the summer, it came to an ugly, ugly head. We were on family vacation. woo um, that's where good things happen. I don't. <laughs> but we were on family vacation, and at the end of our family vacation, Jake had a mental, he had a breakdown, a nervous breakdown. And uh, there we were sitting outside of our cabin, and here I have a child in my car who has lost it, and he cannot hear me. He cannot see me. I'm with my oldest son, and my oldest son says, do you want me to stay or do you want me to go? And I said, I think you need to go. I'll be Okay. Jake is about 5'9 or 5'10 right now. He's taller than everyone in our family. But I pulled him into my lap, and I began praying over him. I began praying the things that I knew God wanted me to pray. I had no idea the whispers that Jake was hearing. All I knew were the things that God wanted him to hear. Yeah. So I began to pray and speak against the lies that I felt like the Lord was telling me to speak against. Speak against the isolation. Speak against the loneliness. Speak against the depression. Speak against the suicide. And as I touched that one thing of suicide, Jake began to laugh. He also has laughed before he was healed of migraines. And when he was healed of migraines, he started laughing. It's one of those things, those Holy Spirit things, that makes me feel really, really awkward. Um, <laughs> But when you see what God is doing in a person and the joy that he's bringing back in, it makes all the sense in the world that it would be joy and that this child who is struggling with suicidal thoughts at age 12 is now hysterically laughing with joy. The enemy had to flee at that moment because the joy of the Lord was engulfing our son. Fast forward, we get home from Budapest, and correctly, actually, it's Budapest, but that's always really awkward for us Californians. So we get home from Budapest, and the next day, my husband and I, we were looking at a home right down the street, and we head to the local Starbucks to talk about how we're going to make this happen and if this is the house for us. We're sitting there, and he is processing through things rather slowly, 
And uh, I'm encouraging him, do you have anything else? Is there anything else you need to process? Is there, are you almost done? Are you finished? Because as we're processing, there's a man, a young man sitting about 10 feet away from us who I cannot get off my mind. That the Lord is downloading things to me about this young man's life that he struggles with loneliness, that he struggles with isolation, that he struggles with depression, and he struggles with suicidal thoughts. So after Casey says to me, I think I'm, th I think I'm done, I quickly take all of our stuff, I go and throw it in the trash, and then I go to that young man and I kneel down before him and I say, this might sound very, very bizarre, because it's bizarre to me. But I feel like the Lord is highlighting to you to me. I love the Lord and I love when he whispers. But I feel like you've been in a relationship with someone and it just went south today. And you need prayer. That the things that the enemy is whispering to you, God wants to speak life back into those empty places. And so he asked how in the world I knew. And I said, well, you have a heavenly father who calls you son. And he wants to speak back into your life. And so I invited Casey to come and we prayed for that young man. The funny thing is we gave him a ride and uh, he said, well, I, I actually need a ride to a local um, coffee shop. Uh, you may not know where it is, but it's Shady Coffee. <laughs> so well, as a matter of fact, we know exactly where that is. What happened was there is a, and I love this, and for you moms, this is like a little tucked away um, verse in the Bible. I grew up with the idea that our children will have to make their own decision with the Lord and that we kind of do this, hands off, we push them and then we let go and we kind of see what happens. But I want to share with you this verse because when I found it, I was stunned. And it's 2 Timothy chapter 1. It's verse 3, 4, and 5. This is Paul, and he is speaking to Timothy. He sees Timothy as his own son. And it says, I thank God whom I serve and my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. I remember my children night and day. I'm sure you moms remember your children night and day too. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that you may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, Timothy, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. As a mom, we have a unique place where we cover our children. We cover them. It is an inheritance. I just got to pray as God highlighted one of these women over here because of the legacy that she has poured into her family. We have a legacy. And what happens is we have a covering that we cover our children, but it's a covering that is supposed to bring life to them. What happens is if we have a covering and we have thorns on our covering, as our children grow, they are going to reach up and they are going to touch those thorns. And they're not going to be able to grow past the thorns that we still carry. It happened to me as soon as our daughter was born. Because her being born touched areas of me that needed healing. That although I grew up in a pastor's family, there were extended family members that were abusing me sexually. And I needed healing from it. And it wasn't until Zoe was born, which means eternal life, that those, that covering exposed the thorns in my life that needed to be healed. And as our children grow, whether it's into toddler and they become passionate, <laughs> very passionate about their way, their will, or teenagers, where all of that comes back and they become passionate about their way, their will. Whatever our covering is, as our kids grow, it's going to expose the thorns that God is desiring to heal. So that our covering is actually a cov covering much like the Father's. He says that his covering is like wings. 
And do you know how easy it is to push up next to wings, to get close to wings? But it's not easy to get close to thorns. You can't get close. And so I believe that today, and I'm going to invite the worship team to come up, but I believe today that God wants to encourage you as a woman and as a mom that he wants to heal those thorny places so that you become a covering not only for your own children, but for this area, for the people who God puts in your life. He is doing something in this area. We see it. I've had dreams about it for two to three years now. He is raising spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. He is not just raising spiritual fathers, but he's doing both. Because the children who are growing up in this area need the covering, the spiritual covering of a father and a mother. Today, as we bow our heads, I want you to bow your heads right now. Today, if anything that I shared resonates with you as a mom, as a woman, as a daughter, I want you to stand up right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He sees you. He is stirring hope back into dry places, even right now. Thank you, Lord. I want you now to come forward. I had you stand because you can't sit back down now. And so I want you to come forward because we want to bless you in the same way that God encountered me with his love. He encountered me with his power, with his authority. He taught me how to speak life over my family, over my children. And he wants to do the same for you. I travel with agape, but I can tell you where the ministry starts for me is at home. It starts with my children. It starts with, starts with my husband. So those of you ladies who are here, I just want you to bow your heads. I just want you to receive what God is doing this morning. He is washing over you with the exact thing that you need. He is washing over you with his love. And those of you who are watching, this is not an observatory time. I want you to be interceding on behalf of these women. As these women get healed, as they get empowered, we do better in bringing God's kingdom here. And so Lord, we pray a blessing on every woman up here every woman, that you would highlight them, that you would touch them right now with your love, with your mercy. Yes. We pray for increase right now in Jesus' name. Pray for every place, every place that has been dry and empty, the doling that has happened because of the things that have happened in your life. God, that you would awaken, awaken their hearts to feel you, to know you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray even right now that you would be healing stomach issues where the anxiety resides. And I speak to that anxiety and I tell it to go in Jesus' name. God, that you would be pouring your love out over these women. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.